I'm going to Disney World. Those are some pretty iconic words right there. Now, children as well as Super Bowl champions love saying it. And trust us, it is a great feeling, but it can be an overwhelming process to plan a Walt Disney World vacation, especially if this is your first Disney trip. But before you decide much else, you need to decide where you're going to stay at Walt Disney World. Are you going to stay on site or off site? And this video is to talk about the pros and the cons of staying off property at Walt Disney World. What's up, everybody? It's Nick from Houdat Travel. Now, I'm going to be honest, we always stay off site, kind of, when we are at Walt Disney World. And I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. If you like these types of videos, please give them a huge thumbs up. It really does help spread out my videos to others with the YouTube algorithm. And what really helps if you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. But without further ado, let's get into the pros and the cons for staying off site at Walt Disney World. Let's start with the pros of staying off site at Walt Disney World. Now, staying off site at Walt Disney World can save you a lot of money, but many factors do play into whether staying off site at Walt Disney will be a budget friendly Disney vacation move. One of those factors is how big your party is. Another is what kind of discounts you can stay by staying on property at Walt Disney World. Now, personally, I'm a Disney annual pass holder, so we qualify for a lot of special discounts to help us save just a little bit more. But if you've got a large party, you know, a VRBO or an Airbnb may be the way to go. Location is going to be another thing. Are you planning on doing something other than just Disney? There are actually other parks there. Uh, so I've heard. I, I don't go off and I only go to Disney. But remember, taking advantage of a hotel loyalty program can also help reduce with some of those costs. Branded credit cards help, and there are just many, many factors to take into account. Offsite hotels at Walt Disney are generally roomier. Now, this is not always 100% true, but the chances of a bigger room at offsite hotels in Orlando is definitely larger. At Walt Disney World, families of five or more usually have to opt to the family suites at Art of Animation Resort, which, well, can be pricey. Worse still, is the alternative of booking two rooms at a Disney Resort, so there can be room for everybody. Staying off-site from Disney World allows you to step out of the Disney bubble. Don't get us wrong, staying on property is amazing. We love the theming, the vibe, and even the crazy cafeterias. But the truth is that even at some of the most relaxing Disney resorts like Pop Century, there seems to always be an element of chaos. But even then, there are always people around. Well, for some, that's fine. But others really do want to get away and not be surrounded by people in the middle of the night with Mickey ears or taking photos every five seconds. If you need a break, then staying off site might just help you a little bit. You can cook your own food, maybe. Unless you're staying at a DVC villa on Disney property, you won't have access to a kitchen during your vacation. And preparing your food is one of the best ways to save money, well, and your waistline. You may prefer to cook your own meals even occasionally while at Disney just to have a break from park food. We have seen some off-site properties that offer small kitchenettes like Homewood Suite or Hyatt Place. Of course, if you're staying in a condo or a house, you'll have all the comforts of home right there for you. And there really isn't anything like a nice home-cooked breakfast or late-night snack after a long day at Disney. You're closer to everything else around Orlando, Florida. <gasps> you mean there's things other than Disney in Orlando? Well, of course there are. If you want to visit Universal Studios, SeaWorld, Legoland, even head over to the Space Coast and see NASA. If you're trying to get to Gatorland for a day or even plan a beach vacation during your time at Walt Disney World, you may be better to stay off property. Walt Disney World is so huge that getting just on and off a of property can take a while, even without factoring in crazy traffic that can sometimes lead to, well, waits in Orlando. So sometimes it is better to stay off a of property if you're not just going to be going to Disney. If you're bringing a car, you don't have to pay Disney Resort parking fees. Now, of course, you still will have to pay to park at Disney World unless you are an annual pass holder like we are. And occasionally you can find hotels around that have no parking fees. Now, Walt Disney World introduced Disney Resort parking fees for any guest parking a car on site. 
While most Orlando hotels do have a parking fee, some of them get waived, as I said. For us, we get waived because we're an annual pass holder. Or you can find the right deals on like Hotels.com or are a loyalty member. And if you're staying far enough out of town, parking fees may not even be a, be a thing. So you can look forward to that. All right, let's move on to the cons of staying offsite at Walt Disney World. So now that we've gone through the pros of staying, of course, we need to look at the other side of that coin and look at the cons of staying at offsite at Walt Disney. Let's be honest about these. Staying offsite at Disney is just less magical. If you're looking for an immersive Disney experience, this will be a big con for you. Now for some, a Disney vacation really is about the theming of the resort, of all of our favorite characters around you, the access to Disney themed food in the cafeterias, the late night Disney movies on the lawn, the trivia filled pool parties with Disney. It's really all in the details. And if you're staying off site, you really don't get those details. So that is one con to make sure your family is okay with. You won't have access to complimentary Disney transportation. Well, I can truthfully say I've driven in much worse places. Los Angeles, New York, Chicago. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Driving in Orlando can sometimes be bad. Congestions, accidents can be an issue since most people around Orlando are tourists and have no clue where they're going. Please, please use Google Maps. It really does help. I digress though. If you don't want to deal with any of it, enter Disney transportation. No matter how flawed it may be, at least it's there. The combo of monorails, buses, the Skyliner, they're all multiple options for when you need to get around. But of course, if you stay off site, you could just also call a taxi if you don't want to pay for parking. Even if you're not staying on property, once you reach the parks, you do have access to all of the Disney transportation. You don't get their Disney Resort perks. While Walt Disney World has slowly been taking away the free offerings, even for Disney Resort guests, there are still some perks for staying on site at Walt Disney World. Now here's that lineup. Advanced dinner reservations can be made 60 days in advance for the entirety of your vacation. Early theme park entry. Extended evening theme park hours for deluxe resort guests. Magic bands at pre-arrival prices. You can find these discounted magic bands in the My Disney Experience app. Early access to purchase individual Lightning Lane passes at 7 a.m. each day of your vacation. Disney Resort guests get free parking at the Disney Parks. Now this list may not be a big deal for everybody, but for us, the early theme park entry is definitely valuable for us. With a toddler, it allows us to go in a half hour early and get a ride or two out of the way before everybody else gets into the park. Best of both worlds. Now, we stay at what is referred to as the Good Neighbor Hotels. Now, the Good Neighbor Hotels are treated as if they were on property, but they're not quite on property. The list is going to be the Best Western Lake Buena Vista, the Hilton Orlando Buena Vista Palace, Doubletree Suites by Hilton Orlando, Disney Springs area, Hilton Orlando Lake Buena Vista, the Holiday Inn Orlando, Disney Springs area, which is where we stay, and I've got a video if you want to see what it looks like. The B Resort and Spa, Disney Springs R Resort Area. The Wyndham Lake Buena Vista Resort, Disney Springs Area. Now, these are a wonderful grouping of hotels. Also, the Dolphin and the Swan are included in these, and a couple other ones that will allow you to be on property, but not on property. Again, we really enjoy these, and it's generally where we stay. Is staying off-site at Walt Disney World better? As you've seen from this video, the truth is that it's not a one-size-fits-all type of situation. It'll depend on your family's taste, priorities, and budget, especially when traveling with a larger group. Now, we do hope that this has been helpful to shed a little light on if a off-site property is good for you. As I've said throughout the video, it is good for us. We stay at those good neighbor ones and we really enjoy it. We can walk to Disney Springs, grab a bite to eat. They've got wonderful pools. And for us, it has just worked out great. But that is our family and your family may have different needs.
So again, if this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help spread my video to others to help them. And of course, hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I release new content. With that being said, I hope everyone has a great day and we'll see you real soon.